السلام عليكم Can you hear me all right? Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa hayakum Allah. Welcome to Kilmatein 2.0. Um, my name is Shok Hayat. I'm from Team Khalid Jask. And today we're starting our talk um, about innovation in education. Uh, we are at the beautiful innovation center by Zain called Zinc. And with us today we have uh, Badil Isa, the founder of MyU app. Uh, we have Khalid Mtawwa, founder of um, founder of Student Hub, and we have Adl Ansari representing the Hub. And today we'll be discussing uh, education and the innovation in education. And but before that, I'd like the speakers to speak about themselves, starting with Bedr. Masakum Allah al khair. Yasadni ni akun maakum al yom. Ushakir li Zain li Khalid Jask tanzim al faaliya hadi. ما تكسر. الله يسلمك. اسمي بدر العيسى مؤسس تطبيق مايو. في أحد ما يتكلم. Anyone doesn't speak عربي? Anyone doesn't understand? Okay. إنزين عيل خلنا أي أحد ما يقدر ما يفهم إنجليزي. So I can know. We can do a bit of both okay. if that works okay. with everyone. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm the founder of مايو. مايو uh, is a school communication app. I started it back in 2014. بديت مشوار التطبيق uh, في سنة 2014. بداية كانت غير واضحة المعالم كان ودي أسوي شيء يخدم التعليم فكان بالنسبة لي يعني لما تخرجت سنة 2011 كانت طفرة السوشيال ميديا وقتها كان تويتر ماخذ السوق واتساب كان مكتسح انستغرام كان on the rise فوايد انجذبت وايد أعجبت بشكثر التطبيقات هذه قدرت تغير حياتنا عن طريق أنها سهلت علينا بصورة كبيرة شلون إحنا نتواصل مع الناس وشلون نقدر نوصل للمعلومة بأقل مدة ممكنة ركزت على تسهيل الوصول للمعلومة وتسهيل التواصل مع الناس So I'll, I'll do a bit of a translation. So back in 2011, when I graduated, I was so inspired by the boom of social networks uh, back in the time. Uh, I was so inspired about how social networks managed to change everyone's lives due to the ease of communication they brought to people, um, the ease of connecting with one another, and the ease of reaching the information. Um, so I decided I want to be a part of this change. قلت إن أنا أبي أكون جزء من التغيير هذا. شفت إن إحنا عشان نتواصل مع أصدقائنا عندنا وسائل عندنا الواتساب عندنا الفيسبوك. All interlinked. Yes. وعشان نتواصل مع أهلنا عندنا وسائل أخرى. عشان نتواصل مع دائرتنا ال professional network الدائرة الاحترافية عندنا وسائل. لكن شفت إن في gap in education. إلى الآن ما في وسيلة تلبي هالاحتياج هذا يعني تلاقي الـ الـ يعني أني مثلا تيتشر ولا ولا ستودنت يتواصل مع أصدقاء بصورة جدا متطورة عن طريق الوسائل هذه ومع أهله ومع كذا لكن لما يتواصل يبي يتواصل مع معلمة أو يتواصل مع إدارة المدرسة الوسائل كانت مو بذاك الـ الـ هذا فهني بديت المشروع ما راح أخذ وايد وقت uh, so I found that there was a gap in education in, 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 in uh, the way people connect, in the way school communities communicate. And uh, I decided I wanted to do something about that. That was back in 2011. Uh, it took some time before I started my U. It was uh, the, the first uh, phase of the project was back in 2014. So that was how it started. But I'll okay. open the floor to everyone. Else. More in a bit about that. And uh, now if Khaled, uh, we can continue with you. Just give us a bit of your info and about Student Hub, please. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Khaled Mutawa. I'm the founder of Student Hub. Um, Student Hub started off as a recruitment platform, Mawqa Tawleef, for students and fresh grads. So when we first started out, we made a platform for students to create accounts. Once their account is created, they build their CV, and then we have companies who post jobs that they can apply to. Um, Halfway through our journey, we figured out that um, corporates were complaining to us that we can't hire students because it's not really legal for us. Because once the ministry comes in and they find someone working there and he's not registered under the company, 
uh, they face issues, and uh, they can't do that. So we had to figure out a way to get that done. So after some work, we got a ministry approval. Anyone hired through Student Hub would be able to bypass that ministry Hello. issue. And um, that's when we built like a full infrastructure for student recruitment. So we hire students, we train them, and then we manage their assignments across stores all over Kuwait. So now if you walk into any mall, you'd find people working under us, but we manage their full schedules and everything. And that's it when it comes to student help. Hello, Mashallah. Uh, Adil, a bit about Zahab and yourself, please. Hi, my name is Adil Ansari. I um, began my career in marketing in uh, luxury retail marketing for a luxury retail company. Uh, I managed four premium brands and eventually tapped into some CRM techniques. I then decided to pursue uh, MSc in digital marketing at the University of Southampton, uh, which I recently finished in December 2017. I was uh, lucky enough to meet the founder of Zahab, Mr. Dawood Khlefi, sitting there uh, earlier this year. And I started working for Zahab in January as a marketing and PR manager. Mm -hmm. So Zahab is a fully rounded academic service that professors teachers and students can use, uh, ranging from free tools such as a CV builder to a university directory. Um, we also have a database of 7,000 plus notes, ranging from topics like chemistry to math to French, um, and students can uh, access these notes quite easily. But what really attracted my attention with the Zahab platform is the student offers that we provide. and. Um, as you all know, if you've ever been to the UK or the United States, uh, student mm -hmm. discounts are given by default uh, to uh, anyone who, you know, if you're a student, you just approach a coffee shop, show them your student ID, you're granted a discount. Um, in Kuwait and other parts of the Middle East, it's not given much attention. Yeah. And I found it's very important to provide students with discounts so that uh, they can save money. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are on limited budget and uh, have limited income on a monthly basis. So I'm excited to announce that we recently released our subscription plan for the student offers and we have acquired 50 plus brands under our platform ranging Hello, from Michelle. aviation to jewelry to food to fashion and coffee and much more. And uh, yeah. Nice. Um, so basically, thank you for giving us a summary about each one of you. Um, and now, since you've all been within the education sector and you've all been within that journey, can you please explain to us and tell us how does technology enhance the educational experience? Feel free, whoever wants to speak first can go ahead. <laughs> can go first. Sure. Um, so the thing about technology is it makes life easy, right? That's why it's, it's becoming more and more embedded into every sector in our lives. True. Um, at tech, uh, education technology has for some reason been probably the, the, the sector that is lagging behind. I mean, we had um, technology serving food and beverage yeah. um, from 12 years ago, um, you know, and then, you know, they grow and they became, uh, you know, they, they, they were acquired before, you know, even uh, before ed tech startups started to, to emerge. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the reason why is uh, it's one of the most, you know, it's, it's one of the most risky uh, fields in technology to operate in. It's not clear. Uh, it's not clear uh, up until today um, who the customer is for, you know, for many cases. Um, you, uh, your end user sometimes doesn't have the decision to use you or not. I mean, in our case, for example, this is one of the challenges we face. Um, we, our end users are the teachers and the students. But mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, a tool can be very helpful to them, but due to some rules by their schools, they can't just, just use, uh, you know, those tools. So, uh, so it, it becomes, it's a very layered uh, ecosystem. And for solutions to be able to penetrate through those layers and provide solutions, um, that has been a very, challenging, um, you know, a, 
a very challenging aspect of ed education technology. Uh, nonetheless, it's, I mean, in general, since, since you know, technology is being the tool that is making life more efficient and saving everyone's time, uh, embedding it into education uh, has been, you know, it definitely is, is one of the most, um, you know, one of the most um, uh, productive efforts that any company can do. Do you think, sorry to cut you, but do you think that the reason why um, uh, innovation in technology within the educational sector is it's hard to commence is because people are so used to routine and they don't want room for change, kind of, or...? I, th I think the risk li lies in the business model that the startup chooses to, to, to take. Okay. So, um, in our case, we've decided to go for a hybrid model. Mm -hmm. So there's a free tier where the users uh, can, can use the service totally for free, and then some freemium features that they can acquire, in the case of the free tier. Uh, or there's a subscription model where the institution essentially pays and the users get the full fledge of the service. Yeah. Uh, so, but that, I mean, that kind of model, uh, you know, takes time for you to be able to figure out because there's different layers, different segments of the market that you need to cater to. Uh, while paying so much attention to the usability of the product mm -hmm. uh, because that would essentially be the growth factor of the company. So, I mean, in, in a nutshell, um, I think education in, um, technology in education is very, you know, it, it provides so much impact and makes life very easy and, you know, make, makes everything very productive, especially in the education system. It just, there's a huge challenge embedded in the business model itself of, of s certain startups operating in that field. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, somewhere in between that the, start, the entrepreneur has to find their way through. Okay, thank you. Khaled, you wanna touch on that? Yeah, so I'm gonna take a bit of a different approach to that. Okay. So your question is how does innovation help education yeah, or like how does how does technology enhance the educational experience <laughs> like we've seen a trend recently where everything is turning to apps you have right. apps used in school mm -hmm. apps used everywhere and that's nice like it's a minor increase but if you think of it on a grander scale is innovation changing education personally i'm against the entire like the entire education system, the way we have it, the way we are right now. Okay. So Can you if we're, ta if we're linking that? innovation to education, yeah. I think education is lacking innovation because okay. the way the education system is working has not seen much change in the past, I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. Kind you of stuck in routine. You still have the bit. same routine. You have 12 or 10 or I don't know how many grades. And then mm -hmm. after that, you still have to go to college slash university. So the only weird thing that I've seen is in Switzerland, they have this, I was just talking to him about it, the apprenticeship. Yeah. So in this way, education is following a different standard where you're learning through experience. So yes. you go for an apprenticeship at, a, let's say, at a company or something. So, And you shadow people, basically, to yeah. understand what you can so, and can't do. Yeah, so... Hello? That, yeah. Sorry. So that's the nice part. So you're learning through experience. So yeah. innovation doesn't certainly, like, I don't believe it has to be tech. It's mm -hmm. just... That alone is a form of education. Yeah. Why not just and innovation rebuild itself. the entire model, think of an entirely new way to educate people. Mm -hmm. So m maybe we could use tech to homeschool people. Maybe we mm -hmm. could use tech, but it doesn't have to be tech. Like, if we can think of something entirely new where you can have customized plans for every single person or... Something like that. Basically convenient to each and everyone's situation. Exactly. Like you might have someone who just isn't good with people or someone who doesn't mm -hmm. want to do sciences or someone sure. who doesn't want to do maths. Uh, yeah. So not everyone has to follow the exact same path. And then after 12th grade, then they get the freedom to do whatever. And then even by then, they don't even have the freedom because they have the pressure from the parents, the pressure from the ah. whoever it is. You have to be a doctor. You have to be an engineer. You have to be... Uh, kid, kid. Yeah, yeah. So basically you're saying people, it's better for people to experience things themselves so they can better understand who they are and that in its form is an innovation in education. Yes, and then you have other issues. So partly what I like st about Student Hub is because 
we supply with jobs, but part of the mentality I'm trying to go for, mm -hmm. like, in general, child labor is frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can find a form of it that is linked to education, that is not frowned upon, mm -hmm. where they learn from work experience, but that is not as serious. Yeah. Or something like that. A good uh, balance. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a random idea. I'm just brainstorming, but I'm thinking we have to think of something entirely new for the entire education system. Hello. Mm, that's it. Okay. Adil? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, innovation and in technology, when linking it to education, it's quite important, especially when we look at Kuwait. Um, so the mentality towards education here, uh, I feel, I think maybe the gentleman can agree, is that most students uh, feel like they have to get a degree mm -hmm. rather than wanting to get a degree. Yeah. So the way that you can be innovative with technology is tap into modes of, uh, for example, gamification. Mm -hmm. So if you tie in your innovative product or your tech product into something that is tied into modes of game or mo modes of play, so sort of a, a rewarding system or a point system, this can sort of indirectly encourage students to, to want to study. So for example, if you give them points for uh, uploading notes, then they'll want to take notes. You'll increase this competition, this competitive note taking, which is what we're aiming to do at Zahab with our next uh, rollout, our next update in a month's time. Okay. I think that eventually, you know, we're going to have a generation that is just glued to screens. We already see it. I've, yeah, I was just going to say, you see even kids swiping and walking around from this age to like how old we are right now. And the most important thing to them is something that lights up. Exactly, exactly. So if you can, you know, be creative about that and sort of incentivize students to, to, to want to study or to want to share notes or to want to... Uh, let's say, uh, uh, choose a particular major because of, uh, of an incentive, or, uh, then it can definitely increase and sort of change that mentality that we have currently in Kuwait. But definitely, I think that uh, the more innovative you are with your product, the more incentives you give, it can sort of clear these gaps that we've been trying to fill uh, for, for so many years. Hello. Thank you. Starting with you, Adil, um, why should startups focus on the educational sector? Like why, yes, it's a topic that hasn't been touched on much, but if there is maybe like a reason or two for you to focus on, in summary, why would the educational be, uh, sector be something highlighted for you as opposed to any other? Well, I was reading recently a, a report from the World Economic Forum and uh, Kuwait is ranked 61 out of 143 global economies in terms of uh, ICT readiness. So that means mm -hmm. internet communication technologies. So clearly there's a lot of room for, for improvement there. Yeah. And um, you know, the, the best way to sort of uh, if, if startups focus more on education, then you can sort of um, enlighten the next generation to, okay. to find more industries, to find things that they're interested in, mm -hmm. and sort of bring what they've learned into the actual community itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with this whole new vision of uh, Kuwait 2035, I, I really think it's important that uh, people start to tap into things, new things, and, and want to learn and want mm -hmm. to, to, to discover these things. Um, so definitely, I think startups should focus on this, this shadow market, this gap market, uh, and, and sort of uh, improve the next generations to come through technology. I think it's, uh, it's the best way to go about it. Hello. Thank you. Khaled? Do you want to touch me? Sure. <laughs> um, why should startups focus on education? A reason or two. I don't really think there's a reason to focus on education okay. as a startup. Mm -hmm. um, my approach is more towards as a government, on a government sure. level. Yeah. But in terms of startup, the only reason I see for a startup to focus on a specific industry is for the money. If there's potential to make money out of it, go ahead. Okay. Otherwise, why are you wasting your time? Just be a non-profit. <laughs> True. Definitely. Thank you. Bede? Uh, I would agree partially with Khalid. I think... Um, any entrepreneur who focuses on education, 
um, there, there, there has to be some sort of a, you know, a passion to what they do, or maybe uh, appreciation to the social impact that their startup is, is bringing about. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you rarely would find someone who's merely looking for uh, monetary terms approaching an uh, education technology startup. Okay. Uh, for the simple reason is, is, is because startups in other fields do you know, make more money than startups in the, ed in the education technology field. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the way I see it, you know, the, the, all the companies that have pursued education technology is, uh, you know, they, they either have uh, some sort of government uh, mission that they're trying to fulfill, or, or you know, uh, uh, a f founders, um, you know, uh, willingness to do something that has a social impact uh, in addition to, to being, uh, you know, a, a for-profit company, of course, but with a social impact mission that would elevate the education, um, you know, level in their countries or uh, in, in, the, in the ecosystem that they're operating in. Okay. Hello. And now, a question for all three of you. Um, and this is through the perspective of each one of your apps and platforms. How can apps, you guys, solve problems, students, teachers, and parents face when it comes to education and with that the conflicts that each one of you face and why what you're trying to do to resolve that uh if you can name three each that would be great up to you yeah sure so uh so at my U, this is really the core of what we do we try to make the experience of students parents and schools better more efficient so in a nutshell, we digitize the entire school experience. We digitize the, com the school communication. Mm -hmm. We make the school community more connected. Uh, so, in a, in a, so that we reach a point where in a similar, uh, you know, in, in, in the similar kind of experience that we communicate with our friends and family, mm -hmm. this is how school communities should be able to communicate. This is how students should, this is how easy students should uh, be able to uh, receive information, ask questions, this is how easy teachers should be able to uh, share uh, important documents or uh, send a message to parents, uh, you know, or, or, or send an announcement to their students. That is really the core of what we do. So we've, we've essentially digitized the communication in these school communities. We've digitized many different functions of the school experience like um, you know, sharing, uh, sh sharing and receiving homework, uh, as an example, um, you know, taking attendance, posting grades, all of that is now, you know, at the, you know, a click of a button away. So this is at the core of what we do, and this is how, you know, we're, we're trying to contribute to the Just daily a question, life. sorry. Yeah. Do you receive any conflict when it comes to applying this to different schools? Conflict? Mm -hmm. Like, is it, is it tough to, to take this program and apply it to the school itself? So it has been, alhamdulillah, يعني, alhamdulillah, it has been very smooth with, you know, growing with users, right? Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, so recently we've, we've been operating at more than 65,000 students checking and using the app every single Shall day. I? So it has been very smooth in that regard. On, a, on the different layer, on, on applying it maybe on, on a government scale, yeah. where, for example, um, districts, or uh, ministries, ministries of education, trying to apply that kind of يعني, uh, solution to all the schools that fall under them, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe even in the private sectors, that has been a challenge. Okay. It's just there, has, is, there is always a gap between what ministries, what the people in charge, what the people who uh, you know, make decisions think is the best for their community, and what the actual community feels is and the one. best for, the, for them and what solves their solution. So there has been this gap and it's, it's been a challenge uh, for us. So that's why in the beginning I said, you know, people in, in, in the, especially in the companies that try to digitize the school experience, they either are rich entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with tools that teachers don't want to use, <laughs> or entrepreneurs with tools that every teacher in the world wants to use because of this layer gap between the decision makers and the actual users of, of these technologies. Hello, thank you very much. Definitely, I, I think I can agree with Mr. Bedir in mm -hmm. terms of the bureaucratic processes in Kuwait and how difficult it makes it to 
uh, approach an institution or approach a government entity to Can you roll elaborate? Out. Absolutely. I mean, so when you approach a government high school and you show them all your communicational tools like the announcement features that we have or the attendance taking features or uh, uh, assignment submission, they, they love the idea, but I'd I think uh, a lot of it is talk. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to making the actual decision of rolling out the platform, it just it's such a lengthy process. And um, I think everybody sort of wants to take recognition for bringing this platform to the institution. And yeah. that sort of delays the process even further. And um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, in, in the educational, in the ed, uh, like educational uh, tech or startups, you're trying to bring something good to the community, sorry, okay. to the youth, um, whether it's uh, beneficial tools for teachers or even students. Mm -hmm. But it's been very tough here. Um, I think um, high levels of corruption and, and the bureaucratic processes sort of delays all of that and makes it very challenging for, for startups such as ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Khaled? Well, in our startup, I guess it's a bit of a different case because we don't approach education as yeah. education, so we don't offer any. So when it comes to how, like the acceptance of parents and teachers and so usually we don't interact with teachers and the education system. The way we educate is usually through work experience. Yeah. So we through guarantee the students that have finalized, yeah. or through could they also be within university working? Yeah, in these yeah. most of the people right now they're within universities, and we're guaranteeing them jobs as students, and they're making Hello. extra money on the side. Very Their nice. parents are very happy because most of them, um, especially the non Kuwaitis, mm -hmm. they're. In, in some cases, they're working to pay off their university bills. Yeah. So they wouldn't have had access to the education without the job. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the, the family is happy. And also the employers themselves are happy because they get really motivated people at a fraction of the cost and there's no commitment. So they don't have to pay indemnity or things like that. And all of this goes on his CV. So by the time he graduates, he's already guaranteed a job at lots of other employers Brilliant. for full time. Yeah. And just a question, within the culture and community in Kuwait, because Student Hub, any compared to the past, is pretty new for, the, for society. Is it tough for people to understand that people with no experiences... New? Okay. Students themselves have, um, while working in school, worked at different places, like worked at different occupations. Are employers easy to accept that in Kuwait? Initially it was difficult, but Can also... Um, they were worried about productivity, about okay. them. So we've switched it into an hourly model. So mm -hmm. employers pay per hour. Nice. So if, so uh, let's say you want to hire someone, I give them to you and they work for two, three hours and you don't like them. Okay. Um, we want no leniency, no special treatment. You fire them on the spot and within 24 hours we replace them for you. So it's a hiring and firing policy. Yes, yes, basically. yes. We're very serious about it. They have to have that professional level and for employers because uh, we deal with lots of corporates so we approach corporate clients let's say they tell you okay um, we, if they're hesitant about it we usually give them okay we'll give you three people mm -hmm. they'll work free of charge for the next two three months yeah we'll pay their salaries okay you like them you keep them you don't like them it's okay no commitment you'll fire them and Everything's good. And any damage. So part of our contract with most employers is mm -hmm. we take care of all the damages and all the legal stuff. So um, even government relations. So employers have no reason not to hire. Okay. And while, while these students are, are doing these jobs and, and procure these occupations, do they get a salary in some uh, programs? Yeah, yeah. So we, we have a... Fec from, yeah. I, I don't mean, sorry, excuse me, but not, uh, not a salary from your side, but from the employer side. No, that's the salary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. not... We don't pay ourselves. The yeah. employers pay, but those who are hesitant to yes. convince them, we tell them, don't pay. We'll pay for the first okay. few months. Okay, got it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and now we'll open the floor up to any questions and uh, questions you'd like to ask. Yeah, go for it. Welcome, Mokhoukum Badr and Nasser, from the Kuwait. You know the technologies every five, six months is updated, and uh, the technologies with the new IoT is updated even each six months. 
So what you are thinking about the next, for example, three of the both three projects that you have it, what is your plan for the five extra five years in the future? Do you think that your uh, your application it will be fit in after five years? Because sorry for that, guys. Yeah, nowadays there is a lot of applications. I can copyright your uh, your ideas, and I can make s s some different uh, some different uh, features, and I will be your competitors. So how you can deal in the market nowadays? Of course, the project without any incoming uh, monies, nothing. So any services or helpful? Do you think this one it will be stable for you in the future, or you will do your ex your experience, and after that you will stay? So what is your plan in the future? I mean, I, I'll invite you to try, really. Uh, you can try copywriting and begin on your own and venture out an educational company. Sure, go for it. But there are many issues that you'll be facing. And uh, I think one of the biggest issues is uh, retention of, co of uh, customers or students themselves. So many students have a pro program of three to four years, and once they're, they're gone, then your customer is gone. Right, so you have to sort of be creative and, and retaining them over a long period of time or make them lifetime value customers. I think that's one issue. Um, our sort of ultimate vision is to provide a perfect communicational tool along with recreational services for students and suiting their needs through our offers and discounts that we provide them. Um, we're also working on retaining them after uh, they graduate from their programs uh, with our Zahab, Zahab alumni uh, sort of uh, package. Um, the ultimate vision really is to uh, create an actual place where students can come together, be comfortable, study, and learn from one another, and see all the workshops and talks and professional development that, uh, courses that we plan to offer under one spot. Um, Copyright in Kuwait is, is a huge uh, problem, I feel. Um, uh, it, is, uh, it is within the law that you cannot copyright another business, for sure, but it's not enforced whatsoever. Um, but it is very challenging to enter the educational market. So uh, I guess that's my answer to you. Yes. It's true. I think there's 16, maybe 16 delivering companies. Yes, in there is 16 deliveries nowadays. So even even the people nowadays they they don't know what to choose in the market. Even yeah. nowadays, even the electric the electronic shops nowadays, there is a lot of electronic shops. So it depends on the services and what is sure. the technologies in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, this one is my uh, my target. Yeah, do yeah. do you have a plan to prepare for the IoT in the future? This one is mine. Uh, specifically, the integrations with the th with the bigger companies. With a, not a developer companies, with for example, nowadays what you are speaking about educations, there is multi vendors in the market like Cisco or there is like they yes. have their educations smart uh, smart uh, smart mirrors uh, smart smart TVs, smart, TVs, uh, smart uh, knowledge and right. all this helping these kind of things. I think. Do uh, you think only the, the level of applications or your gap uh, your uh, your vision is more than that. Uh, definitely, definitely, depending on the need of the market, we'll have to adapt accordingly. I think any startup will have to face that problem. Um, IoT and Internet of Things is right around the corner, but is quite ready for it yet? I'm not sure. Uh, it could take a few years, it could take a year, but once that does happen, then definitely we'll have to integrate our, our services in and adapt accordingly to that. I'm very proud of our tech team, so totally not worried about that. Like I could give you our source code today and tomorrow will become something completely different. So every day, yesterday's code is outdated. So uh, I'm not really worried about that. We'll always be able to integrate. We move very fast. Yeah, actually, I wanted to comment, I, to add to uh, what my friends here mentioned. Um, you know, back when uh, Snapchat was on the rise, uh, they were a huge threat to Facebook at the time because they came up with a different model, right? All of a sudden, you can create a, a moment that would self-delete, right? A model that didn't exist in any of Facebook's, uh, uh, you know, platforms. When I say Facebook, I mean Facebook, the company. So it wasn't on Facebook, the app. It wasn't on Instagram. It wasn't on um, the Messenger. It wasn't on 
WhatsApp. Now you see it in all of them. Um, so it was, it was a new idea, right? So, so Facebook, when they saw this amazing success in, 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 in this small company that captured a need in the, peop in the people to take random pictures rather than be يعني, in their best looking uh, way to take a picture, right? Uh, so they tried to acquire Snapchat. Uh, or follow. They, I, th I think the, they proposed four billion or something. So at that stage, Facebook tried to replicate the Snapchat app through an, a new technology that they introduced to the market. But that didn't uh, see the light. It, it saw the light, but it wasn't successful. So to comment on that, it's really not the code. It's not the features, it's the culture in the people that you build using your service that makes your company special or that makes your service special. And that can only be built with constant uh, you know, development and understanding of the users. So the race between startups isn't really in developing new features, uh, isn't really in copywriting or any of that, it's in understanding the market. If you can understand the market and understand your clients faster than anyone else and introduce the features, not necessarily huge or tech intensive, not necessarily the internet of things, it could be absolutely you know, away from all of that. But you capture the need and be able to provide a simple solution to it faster than any of your competitors, then you have the market. So like you said, there is uh, 16 delivery companies, right? I, I mean, I know six of them. I'm not sure about the other 10. But uh, are they all operate? They probably all, all have similar feature sets, right? But are they all as successful, you know, equally successful? They're not, صح? Because some of them have been, have improved their cycle of going to the market, getting feedback from the users, getting back to the development team, developing the features that people want, going again to the market and improving that cycle and improving their conversion and their funnels faster than anyone else. And this is how you grow. This is how you make sure that you can reach to new clients faster than anyone else and you can retain those clients and keep them engaged and keep them coming to you faster than anyone else. So it's really not in the, in the code as much as it's in the, in the entire uh, you know, in the entire approach the company takes, in the process that the company takes, acquiring the clients and retaining them. So, yeah. You're welcome. Does anyone have another question they'd like to ask the speakers? Sure. We'll go first. Ladies first. Gentlemen. Thank you, um, thank you for guys for this talk. I really enjoyed listening to you. And uh, there's just this one point that you guys haven't touched on, and I don't know if you guys do anything related to that problem, but as everyone knows, like, uh, the attention span of the human is going very low. We're now equal to uh, an attention span of a goldfish. That's an actual study. It's, um, but since you guys are talking about the innovation in education, uh, how can we solve this problem to make education um, easier to uh, absorb and, you know, with all of that uh, distraction around us? Is that a problem that you guys are thinking about? I, as much as you see it as a problem, it might be someone else's opportunity. Yeah, so maybe having people as goldfish makes you more money. Um, <laughs> What do you mean on, by that? On, on a government level, you yeah. want your people to be smart. Mm -hmm. But an entrepreneur doesn't really care. He just wants to make money. So if he sees all these goldfish, he'll just you know, feed them. But how do you feed yeah. them? I mean, yeah. if our friend here is asking how basically you can keep people attentive within three seconds of each... Yeah, uh, but you need to thing. figure out why do I want them to be attentive. Yeah. So, so is there a reason that you want them to absorb this information? Yeah. This means Sorry? You would want them to be engaged with your solution, so you need to cater to their attention span. I think that's what the question was. Or you can just deliver it in one second instead of three. Exactly. Yeah. That's true too. So uh, because now we're in an environment where there's so much digital noise and digital clutter, mm -hmm. so they used to say that 
if you were to promote an ad on social media, it should be 30 seconds. But now it's 15, and I think it's going to go down to 10, and maybe 5. So if you want people to learn, then as Khaled mentioned, instead of doing a how-to video in a minute, you do it in 20 seconds, right? Uh, another important aspect I find in, in our market is uh, for, for digital Zs, um, the best way to sort of get them to look at your product or to pay attention is you either humor them or you educate them. So if you touch up on these sort of elements, you can sort of beat that noise and stick out. I think that's the best way to answer your question. You're welcome. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what we found is uh, rather than sort of pushing Zahab on an institutional level or, mm -hmm. or through, uh, you know, uh, key stakeholders, uh, we found why not win the favoritism of our students? And what we've done is we've changed our content and we, we're constantly curating new exciting content for them to see. <laughs> um, I think with that approach, uh, we're, we're definitely going to be winning them over on, on a social media level. Hello. But on our, on our new rollout for uh, the next month, uh, we're going to have a major app update that's going to have a lot of cool, exciting features that sort of meet those, uh, those demands of the goldfish. Is there something we can know about the new features coming up? Uh, I'll look at my boss for approval. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So um, uh, there are many cool things that we're going to be introducing. And... Uh, I'd love to talk to talk about them, but uh, I think it's better if we wait. Okay, uh, sure. We wait uh, for about 25 <laughs> days or so, and uh, perhaps uh, we can find then out. Then it's something to look forward to. Definitely, sure. definitely. Uh, you had a question? Sorry. Yeah, hi guys. With the rising of uh, social media and tech, uh, as you mentioned before, Khaled, and also you, uh, the method of teaching or curriculum it didn't change uh, like for 60 years. So yeah, uh, how close we are from adding the social media or the tick on our teaching uh, methods? Or I think uh, on a government level, it's probably going to take another 60 years. But uh, we see initiatives from from uh, teachers and what we've noticed from high schools especially is that uh, um, what teachers are doing is they're creating WhatsApp groups uh, to help stimulate these digital conversations outside the classroom. So these sorts of <coughs> private initiatives can help fill those gaps and make up for what is lacking on a government level. Um, how close are we? I, I mean, not in Kuwait. Yeah, Kuwait, uh, yeah, you know Kuwait, but... Um, Globally, like. Global, I think it's already there. I mean, there are many, many examples you can find where, uh, uh, you know, people are learning in a cool, innovative way. Uh, there's a lot of e-learning uh, uh, websites and platforms that are going on now. People are learning more at home now rather than, you know, uh, the traditional method of uh, learning or being physically... With, uh, available with a tutor, right? So uh, I think, um, with, if anything, Kuwait is behind in that sense. But globally, uh, definitely some key examples you can find um, that, that have. Hong Kong, Finland. Sorry? Hong Kong, Finland, there's good examples of uh, I teaching. Uh, I think so, but uh, why don't you let us know? Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not aware of uh, Finland and Hong Kong. Uh, do you do you have an example or two they can share with us? How can I hear about that? But I don't I don't I don't have a clear of their idea of what they do there. But I hear about the Hong Kong and Singapore and Finland. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And as far as I know, is uh, the current education system is like just a place to drop your kids, so you have time to yourself. Okay. But other than that, uh, like I don't know if people want to innovate on that because that's how they get the time to themselves. So other than that, where do they put the kids? But it shouldn't be just that. I mean, their kids are learning and they're grasp. They're they're like 
given the fertilizer of knowledge while they're at school. So if it's if it's in the par parents' mentality to just drop off my child, they have to be known. They have to know that they're being taken care of. So that's where it's very important. But yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. Like, uh, okay. I guess I don't know. Maybe there's a selfish factor to it. True. I mean, I see it both ways. But just stating both. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you for being here for the talk of innovation in education for committee. Join us next month, inshallah, for our next topic. Thank you, and thank you to Zane, and thank you for everyone here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.